It's Dylan's KC Barbecue at four Valley locations. Our sports bar in Arrowhead is packed with TVs for the ultimate sports fan. Our Wildlife World Zoo location will have you on the edge of your seat, dining right next to our 60,000 gallon shark tank. Dylan's Bayou at Pleasant Harbor has never ending sunsets, beautiful people, and live music every weekend. And our newest location, Western Trails Ranch, is 12 acres of rodeo fun and live outdoor concerts for the entire family. It's Dylan's KC Barbecue where we're elite, unique, and memorable. Welcome to the She's So Right Show. Conservative women being led by Christ to stand for what's right. Meet your hosts, Lindsey Graham, labeled the Patriot Barbie by the leftist mob. She is a proud author and advocate for freedoms and conservative values. Brandi Barclay is a powerful Christian voice on Faith Talk Radio, the founder of Power Soul, and a certified life coach. Guys, get ready to say it way more than you're used to. She's, She's so right. right. Starts now. Freedom Fighters. Are you tired of giving your hard-earned money to big corporations who use their power against us? The more money we give them, the more power they have. We are done. As conservatives, the best and most effective way to vote is with our dollars. We are also committed to shopping products that are cutting edge and toxin-free for a healthier lifestyle. Next time you need daily essentials for your home and body or are looking to drastically improve your skin care and health care with superior collagen and supplements, go to to www.shesorightshow.com and click shop our products. Get instant access to our favorite things that will revolutionize your home, your health, and how you do business in the USA. Use our shopping link to get $10 off your first order. Go to www.shesorightshow.com. Follow us on Instagram at shesorightshow to find all our promo codes and discounts. Are we still talking about our discounts? Go to our website. Oh my gosh. Jeremy's okay. like, you made this joke Seriously. Last time. <laughs> you guys, I'm sorry about our long infomercials. We gotta cut those down. Hey, oh, our guest you are <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to the She So Right Show. Brandy Barclay here. Lindsey Graham is in the studio looking like Paula Abdul, like a whoop, hot whoop. tamale. Straight up, now tell me. And Get we it. have Colton Duncan here. He is an aggressive, young, very young, political consultant that defies the conventional model of consulting. He has spent the ent entirety of his career engaging with the conservative base, building relationships with leading influencers, leaders, and organizations within the movement. He's an unapologetic Trump Republican. Ooh, we call those Trumplicans, our peoples, fighting the culture war and pushing back against the radical left and the spineless rhinos on the right. Ooh, we're, so we're already pissing everyone There's right. so much juicy stuff. To, like, <laughs> Hated into by here. everyone. C C right. Colton Duncan's in I'm the house. I'm actually not going to talk. Just go. So thank you all for having me. <laughs> it's cool to be here because I got to, when I first moved to Arizona, it was kind of around the time you guys were starting this, right? Oh, was it? I didn't know that. No, we haven't been to Arizona. Yeah, well, I mean, I lived here for three years, and then I moved to Washington D.C., which uh -huh. was an absolute. I mean, when they call it the swamp, I'm telling you, it's like worse than you can even imagine. Oh my gosh! Um, like worse than Oregon. <laughs> well, it's it's just evil. Oh. It's just the people there, and everything's transactional. It feels dark when you're there. Actually, it literally feels oppressed in the air. Yeah, no, it, it's a it's. I, I hated it. I was there for 10 months. And anyways, I moved back here. But um, D.C. is full of consultants. Well, let me backtrack. Ronald Reagan said the nine most terrifying words in the English language are, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. Mm -hmm. The most terrifying word in all of politics is consultant. When you hear the word consultant run, mm -hmm. those are the people... Isn't that your that, title? That is my title. <laughs> hey, we gotta run. We gotta run. No, right? We're gonna wrap this I knew this, show this up. was a. That, I knew this was a mistake. We that, talked about this last night, Lindsay. That being that being said, there are good consultants. There are America First consultants that are in it for the right reason, and I, you know, like to think of myself as one of those people. But the consultant class is everything wrong with politics and everything. You, you know, you, you. The generic, you know, oh, I hate politics. It's it's awful. It's all corrupt. The corruption really does come from the consulting class, and that's something that's not talked about enough. Mm. Let's um, let's break this down really quick for our listeners, because you know, Brandy and I are into politics. You're obviously a political consultant, but what does a consultant do? Nothing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, consultants, you know, they uh, advise politicians, okay. and they 
there, you have, you've got media consultants, which is kind of a little bit of what I do. Um, you've got fundraising consultants. You've got policy consultants. Essentially, in politics, if you just work in politics and don't know what to call yourself, a lot of times they just throw the uh, label consultant. Okay, that's what I am. Is yeah. it like a, it's, it's kind of somebody who strategizes? Yeah, it's like correct? a strategist, right. Right. Um, an operative. Um, there's good consultants, like I said. I'd like to believe I am one of those. And then the vast majority of the consultant class is just... They're playing people. the game. They're, They're playing consulting the game. based on what's going to get us the cards. most votes, yep. what's going to look best well, to the public, whether it's true or not, that kind of thing. The consultants are the ones that come in and poll an issue so that a politician knows where to stand on it, uh, right? Mm. Even if that's not what they really believe. Exactly. It's like we're just like here Alex to win. Stovall. Here to win. Yes, exactly. Dude, it's like, it's Stovall, like it's like they lick their finger, put put it in the air. The politicians do. What what's going to poll? What's going to get me reelected? Mm. Right. This is oh. the most frightening part of all of it. I yeah. think. I, I really. We're, I think, and I think this is why, why, I feel like, as a re- conservative, I don't even call myself a Republican anymore. Conservative, that. No matter who you kind of place your bet on, there's this part of you that feels like this be- beaten, battered woman. Like, okay, I've been hit before. <laughs> you know, like, it, it's that feeling. Continuously wrong, continuously uh, lied to. The The best politicians, the best leaders are the people that don't want to be politicians and don't want to be leaders. And that's Trump. so <laughs> Trump. Trump. Yeah, right, exactly. That's so rare. <laughs> yeah. Um, which you have a lot of times, uh, not not a lot of times, almost always, is when you talk about career politicians, lifelong politicians, You, these people start at the school board, right? Mm. They're young. A lot of times they're... they're just talked about this. Jan, Jan Ray. Jan Michael. Jan Michael. Oh, Jan. Greenspan. Jan. His daddy. Jan yeah, Michael. Okay. Daddy so lover. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. That's yeah. a good... He's a, he is a perfect ex- example of what's wrong with politics today and what's wrong with politicians in general. So he's my age, right? He's has no kids. He lives in his parents' basement. <laughs> and he wants to spend the rest of his life in office. That's that's what yeah. he's that's his dream, right? Yeah. Some people are called to public service. I understand that. But this guy runs for school board at 26, no kids. No kids. And had he not got caught, I don't, I don't know if your listeners have followed the uh, Scottsdale Unified. So we interviewed scandal. Amanda Ray. Yeah. Oh, okay. So like we've tried to two or three episodes educate ago. And yeah. Edu- yeah, educate yeah. ourselves and others about what's really going on there. How deep. About, this is going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Him collecting this dossier, and had he not yep. had he not been caught, here's what he would have done. He would have been school board, held that position, right? And he he actually ran unopposed. This is a problem too: is people mm-hmm. not stepping up to run. Good people. Mm-hmm. He would have been uh, school board president. Uh-huh. Then he would have ran for city council. Yep. Then he would have ran for mayor. Then he would have ran for Congress, and then he would have ran for Senate. And then one day he runs. You know, he just he he would have spent his entire yeah. life snowballing that. What's, what's the next thing I can run for? Yep. What's the next position I can have? And that those are the type of politicians that should be treated as suspect. Mm. Well, and Brandy made a scary point because we, we were like, "Oh, his career's done. It's done." She's like, "Maybe not. Now he can run as a Democrat because they love those people. Though yes. he's fighting for CRT and he's yeah. fighting the racist white supremacist moms. He's our hero, right? Like freaking George Floyd. Exactly. So is he going to run as a Democrat now? Like well, he might actually have the, just upped his career on the left. They're all they're all held to different standards than anyone on the right. You've got to you've got to be pretty polished and you got to do the right thing if you're on the right. The it seem it seems a lot of times the left gets a free pass. Um, seems like living with might. daddy unemployed is like the perfect Democrat candidate. <laughs> well, you know, and the thing that I I I'm, I know this is not unique or groundbreaking, but. The left is so great at sticking together, like Mm. just like glue, no matter what, like the thieves they are, they just stick together. Whereas Republicans, the it's like exactly the Republicans will you this and you that they break off into these little subculture groups, just like and I correlate this to church. You know, it's like we're all we lose that way. We lose in these little subcultures of, but you think this way about, mm-hmm. it's right? Am I right? Yeah, or? to an extent. I mean, there's things I won't compromise on. I could never just go along to get along with a pro-choice Republican. Mm-hmm. I don't want them in the party. I, I don't want them anywhere near mm-hmm. our party. Mm-hmm. I think I that agree. that's a, if, if I were to be a single issue voter, that's something I wouldn't compromise on. Um, disagreeing with, you know, other Republicans on the marginal tax rates not as big of a deal. Yeah. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. Um, but again, but right. that's a moral right. issue and I yeah. Anyway. Right. It's a it's a yeah, one's a money issue and one's a 
kill babies issue. Like that's a <laughs> pretty big difference. Yeah, it's a huge and for difference. the Democrats that cracks me up because I've said this from the very beginning and I used to be very careful how I say it, now I don't. They're calling everyone racist and I'm like, All right, tell me how being a racist is worse than the fact that you want to kill millions of babies in the womb every day. Right. Tell well, me how throw, that is they throw a worse out these words. They it, it it's just, words. they've done it for decades now. Now now the words mean nothing. I will say this. I have more respect for a full blown Marxist or a socialist or a communist than I do for these mushy moderate milk toast Republicans. Mm. I I have more disdain for those type of Republicans than I do the far left because at least the far left has some sort of moral compass. When that you they follow believe. through, right. yeah, you follow through with what you're believing to the most extreme extent. Moral, as I would to gosh, like, that, eh. calling it a moral compass. <laughs> I would call it an amoral. But have something but, that they, I, 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 I believe, and, it, and this kind of goes back to the whole consultant class and the, the middle of the road Republican who will compromise with the left time and time again and just mm-hmm. bend over, consistently giving them their way. I think is worse than any Democrat in office. Mm-hmm. In I agree. Well, yeah, because they're running. I agree. Because to me, that's being a traitor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or I mean, you, you're you're li- you're. You're being a traitor. Yeah. And you're At saying least one say thing. Say who you are. Yep. You're Be saying who one you thing are. and doing another, and that is in no way respectable. Exactly. Yep. Especially if you're saying it during an election to try to get elected. And then as soon as you're elected, you're like, I gotcha. Mm-hmm. I hate that. We've got like all the time in the world, but mm. we have to talk about how to like vet your candidates because yes. I know this is a huge thing is now that Brandy and I are doing a lot of political things, I've actually had people say, and I'm not going to name names. Well, did you know that, you know, this I person, want names. I want names, sorry. The area, did you know that this person <laughs> dot, dot, dot? And I'm like, wait a minute, hold on. I'm taking pictures with one candidate and someone's saying he did this. It's like, now I got to go research all this. And it's like, oh, I wish everyone well, was just so pure and easy. And, that's the thing is. I feel like this is there's there's a whole nother level where we do have to do our research, mm-hmm. where we can't just go, oh, I like you, you're cute, you're saying what I want to hear on the commercials, right. give me a break. I mean, it's propaganda, all yeah. of it. So yeah. you, we really all do have to do our research. And this is where I think 99% of people, they don't. They, they I would say 1% researches. Well, and they trust, oh, I'm a Republican, so I'm going to vote for the Republican, or I'm going to vote for... Or down the... R down the ticket. Yeah. 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 And, and honestly, I, I I'm guilty. To do it. Dude, totally guilty. Um, but there's got to be a better way. And so, Colton, when we get back from break, I want you yeah. to tell us. A help, to Z. Help us, Colton. Alphabetically, how do we vet our candidates? So, uh, Spoiler alert, they all suck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez, you Uh-oh. guys. Okay, I'm not voting this yeah, year. Well, yeah, don't. No. Oh, we're definitely voting. My vote doesn't, vote doesn't count anyway. Don't, um, don't go kidding. anywhere, guys. We're going to... Well, we right back with more of Colton because he... He's fun. He's not... He's fun. He's, he's young. He tells it like it is, which which is what we want to hear. So we'll be right back with the She's So Right show. Freedom Fighters, you're back listening to the She's So Right Show with Brandy Barclay, Lindsey Graham, and political consultant Colton Duncan. Run. He's in the house today. Run, he's a consultant. Yes. That's what I he don't says. Know if your listeners, <laughs> if you got to listen earlier, but I uh, told everyone there's nothing more evil in po- there's nothing more evil in politics than a political consultant. That being mm. said, um, I do find myself in the uh, consulting realm. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's a good one. How did that happen? How did because I know a little bit I read up on you that you kind of grew up looking very interested and drawn into the political realm. What? Why? Well, they say that uh, politics is a theater for ugly people. <laughs> but I, well, I, I did. Okay, hold on, though. Just so you guys know, Colton is here. He's young. He's cute. So he's not and nasty. Single. So um, that joke is extra funny. I so and single. I just always was attracted to it, and I love the idea of um, the way our legislative chambers worked. I was just nerdy about it, mm-hmm. and then I started working with Turning Point USA, and I've I've actually never worked outside of politics. I wouldn't even know. Mm-hmm. How old are you? Twenty six. I don't even know this. You are so a young. baby. Oh. He is half your age. I mean, half. oh, doesn't yes. look it. Randy. I know. I, it is shocking. We're almost the same age, Colton. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Says my Botox. I've, uh, <laughs> never done anything else, and I've just kind of like stumbled into this role, um, consulting role. This we call it a strategist, a consultant, an operative. There's so many names for it. But like I said earlier, usually when someone doesn't know what to call themselves in politics, they just slap the word consultant on it and uh, charge exorbitant fees. Mm -hmm. I do not. But uh, the uh, entire consulting world is just pure evil. And it's where um, it's where good politicians get lost is with their consultants. Mm. So how many how many uh, consultants would you say like one candidate has that's running for oh, governor or senator um, or something? Wow, I mean, a handful or just one? You no, know, a handful. I mean, it for you know some of the bigger positions like a governor of a state or a senator, you might have a dozen or so consultants. I mean, wow, what happens when they disagree? Oh, boy. I think you should be take this stance. Well, I think you should take this stance. What's a governor to do? Well, you know, in, in an ideal world, the politician has the final say, but so many times the consultants get their power grip over these politicians mm -hmm. and. They 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 all kind of it's all the good old boys club and if you're not in it you're not in it right mm -hmm. and so the firm that I work for is a very young firm um, we're very new on the scene and uh, we sometimes find ourselves not part of the good old boy club because mm -hmm. we're you know very America first we're very um, Trump oriented in that wing of the party and there's so many people the I don't have to tell you all this but there's so many. Uh, Republicans that just really want to see that Trump wing of the party die, and and the more that the, the more <laughs> they want to it to die, the stronger we get. Yeah, yeah, we are here to stay. When you talking about the consultant group, do they get bought off? Oh, I mean, all the is time. That, is well, that is that is that a big thing where you know you go you don't go t you you know that the candidate is buffered by these people that are making decisions. Well, they they either get bought off or they buy off politicians, and a lot of times too, you have. Consultants do their clients a disservice. So you have someone, you have races where you're very, it's very obvious you're not going to win, but the consultants will bleed your campaign dry, mm -hmm. especially if you're self-funding. I'm not going to mention any campaigns here in Arizona, but there's quite a few that have these groups behind them that are just bleeding them dry of all their money. Because you got to think about it this way. As long as they're in the race, um, <laughs> as long as they're in the race, then they uh, continue to pay. And so why would a consultant yeah. say, you know what, there's no pathway to victory. Why don't you drop out and endorse this person? Right. Because they're out of their, you know. So it's, so, it's just self, it's all it's self. All, the, yeah. And then all. there's the the favor thing. This is probably the whole swamp. Like there's the favors. You do someone a favor, they owe you one. Now you've got favors being traded all over whether the person believes in what they're endorsing or not. You owe me right. one. Wow, well, I and, saw, gotta sign that bill. And I owe it's you one. Become, especially, especially in the House, because you got to think about it like this. Every two years they have to run for your for re-election. So as soon as they're done with their election, the they're, next one pretty much again. starts back up. So you've got an entire Congress that we think, you know, we're here in Arizona or anywhere in the country, you think that you send your representatives to Washington, D.C. to legislate and to craft policy. I would 75, 80 percent of what they do is just raise money. They just all the, it, their job is to get on the phone and raise money for their campaign and for their caucuses yeah, too. Yeah, two years. We know how fast that flies by. Mm -hmm. Imagine that half of that is spent trying so to make sure you're getting reelected the next money, time. Money, yeah, money, and money. you're never so that in, that is why they're never working for the people. They're working to please their the bank, mm -hmm. yep. their bank. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and this they, is why Trump their... was so hated. He had his own bank. Mm -hmm. He didn't need everyone else's, and that's what they could not stand was they could not own him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I always say, you know, people bag on me for the Trump thing. You know, he was divisive. He's amoral. He doesn't have fruit of the spirit. He doesn't have the... I'm like, I wasn't hiring him to be my Jesus. I wasn't right. hiring him to be my savior. I was hiring him to run the country like the businessman that he is. And he did a great job with my... In, in my faith, mm -hmm. he held to the standards of my faith better than any other candidate. So... I, this is where I think they try to take us down to as right wing or conservative is where we have this savior complex that everybody that we that we're supporting or backing or endorsing is our savior. Right. No, no, no. It's actually the farthest from they're the truth. Employees. Yeah. Yeah. They're so working so. for us. And I feel like they're the most committed to work for us. And I and I just had this conversation with somebody pretty powerful person, actually. 
who is like, how could you be a Trumper? How, how, how? And I'm like, because this is the deal. If I was a football player, I would want my coach looking out for my team. I would want my coach strategizing for my team. I don't want my coach in the locker room making deals with the other coach from the other team. A novel Th- idea. Is this really that groundbreaking, you guys? No. I, I just don't this get it. This whole show should be pointless. I know, really. We <laughs> should not have... Th- it should. Yeah, I, what I, a novel idea. Politicians working for the people that elected them. Did you consult for Trump? Tell the oh, truth. Oh, I would Gosh, could be you a dream. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but, well, Trump, if you're out there listening to the seen, She's So Right show... I mean, he's... You know, who's president of the United States. Of course, he's surrounded by consultants. But I mean, if anyone with eyes can see, he kind of just he went you know, goes, to, goes to the uh, beat of his own drum. But yeah. Do you think at the end there that he was getting bad um, information, that he was he was being sabotaged? Uh, I think he was being sabotaged from this moment he came down the golden escalator. But I mean, uh, by his by own his party. Own people. Yeah. Saying, oh, my I think a Pence. In the election and well, then, uh, yeah. yeah. What's your thought? Ooh, let's Come go. On. Full conspiracy theory, Duncan. Come on. Conspiracy. Okay. I, well, Mike Pence, have he just kind of there at the end let us all down. There at the end it was just a whirlwind of craziness. I, I mean I, I I don't know. I really don't know how to answer that question. I, I I don't either. I feel like it's so deep no one really knows the truth anymore. That's what I used to say before I was into politics. I used to say I don't talk politics because there's so much out there. You can't possibly absorb it all enough to be actually educated to make a legit argument. And I still feel like when it comes to everything, January 6th and who did what and who did what, do we know everything? I still think no one's ever going to know everything. Well, there's plenty of footage that can be released. Well, but, that uh, we know. There's no insurrect. We know that. I'm not saying that. I'm saying like, mm-hmm. you know, Megan, I was on Megan Kelly podcast and she said Mike Pence could not overturn that. Did you know that? Like he doesn't have the authority. And I'm like. I don't know. I'll look for it myself. And it's like, where am I going to find that information? Colton, is that true? He couldn't have done it? I have no idea. Really? I think that states could have not certified in my... I, that should have, yeah. They could have not certified. Mm-hmm. Just like Arizona could have not certified the election. So Interesting. Well, when we get well, back, let's talk backbone. more about Deep Swamp in D.C. Ooh. Yeah. Just so that I never move there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll be right back with um, the She's So Right show with Colton Duncan. Freedom Fighters, you're back with the She So Right show with Brandy Barclay, Lindsey Graham, and political consultant here in Arizona, Colton Col- 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 Duncan. Duncan. That's Colton. kind of a, tw- a tongue twister, or is that just me? No, Colton. I think it's just it's you. It's the old. It's two, first, two first names, too. We tried to record one of our ads, and she couldn't <laughs> say, like, my pillow something. Oh, stop it. And I was like, you know what, let's switch sections. I'll handle that. And it was like smooth as sound. Like, I don't know, there's something about... Oh, say, say, Col- Col- say Colton Duncan. Colton Duncan. Colton Duncan. I can't do the Colton Duncan. It's a very Col- white name, too. Especially, and I'm from Texas. So it's, it's a very Texas. It's, it's Colton Duncan. It's, very, it's, it's a very, very Texas white political consultant name. Does it sound like a political consultant? Yeah. yeah. Colton's handling my books today. Duncan, Colton, Duncan how do I vote Duncan. on this? Colton Duncan. Maybe a future president. Hmm? Oh, my gosh. Mr. No. President. That's president a, Duncan. That's the thing that I will always, always remain on the... Uh, it's non-negotiable. You're yeah. never going to run for president. I'm never going to run for office. Really? No, I have no interest in running for office. Why? Be your own I want to know why. This bucks. is really interesting. I just—it's not. I'm better advising people. I'm better um, giving advice. I think I, I just. You don't want to play I, that game, kind of thing. I, yeah, I don't want to do it. I don't want people digging into my life. I don't want to. I really, Too I late. really, and I. I, know, I actually, you're on the radio. I really don't <laughs> like. Uh, I don't. I, I'm not a crazy big policy guy either. I don't think I'd be good at it. And just in terms of uh, crafting policy and a lot of the stuff, like I, I'm a big messaging guy and I can sell policy, but trying to craft it and legislate, I have no business being a legislator. So it's almost like you're a great marketer. Yeah, you're almost like and a marketing. Of, that's a lot of the uh, consulting world too. And like yeah. I said, there's different aspects of con- you know fundraising consultants and um, media consultants. Which politicians need, but it's a double-edged sword. Like I said, so many of them are just evil. <laughs> How did you get in? I know we're going to talk about D.C. real fast, but I wanted to say when you're in D.C. and you're seeing what you're seeing, 
did you ever want to just get away from the whole thing? Oh, my gosh. Well, I moved there um, for work. And I tried for months. I tried to convince myself that I like I liked it and that that I was fitting in, but I just didn't fit in there. The Republicans there, I mean, certainly weren't Trump Republicans. It just everything in D.C. is very transactional, and this is something I had to learn the hard way. Uprooted my life from Arizona, actually moved all the way to D.C., signed a lease, and a couple months in, I'm just like, What have I done? Oh my gosh! Because it's you don't you don't have normal friendships, right? You don't have just grabbing a bite to eat. It's when you sit down for a drink. Who do you work for? What do you do? Oh. Yeah. How can you help me? It's all transactional. Interesting. And so people just That'd kind be of exhausting. Like, yeah, it's exhausting. And people just want to, you know, they, they they think that when they sit down that they can pull something, extract something from you. I mean, there's everyone's listening to everything. People, it's it's evil. It's like it's you, we watch you know shows like Scandal and House uh-huh. of Cards. Yeah. It really. I mean, I never and I never really got very deep into any of it um but it really does feel that way so once they have a a, a cocktail with you and they decide you are useless to them is it like all right oh i'm not useless to anyone (laughs) oh it's just it's like i mean you guys colton brought us christmas gifts and every it's a calendar and every picture in the calendar is of himself so we're not dealing with somebody who doesn't value there's only been 30 30 printed so these are one of a kind this is going in my safe collector's items yeah yeah, they're little desk calendars, and each month has a different picture. <laughs> My favorite time. is September, <laughs> so actually. Funny. It's a hunting picture. Um, no, it's just, uh, yeah, D.C. sucked. It was just, it was awful. Swampy and swamp. Yeah, you try to, friendship really isn't a thing there. I, yeah. I know that sounds weird, but it's like, it's all, Everything's everyone, a partnership. everyone's trying to advance their career, which there's nothing wrong with advancing your career, but. Yeah. But here, it, but do you feel that way here in a, in a different way? I mean, you're now you're on Carrie Lake's campaign. You don't feel any of that going on right no, now? No, I, I think it's great here. I love Arizona. Um, I actually like it a lot more than when I used to live here. Um, the people are great. The conservatives are great. Um, everyone in the movement, I mean, I, it's night and day. It really is. Um, I have no complaints about I well, mean, there's a, con, there's a you know, Beltway consultant class here, too, that kind of sucks, but I've largely ignored them. Well, I would think that there's there's good and bad people on each side, right? And Washington, D.C., to me, seems like you took all of the bad yep, because if you want to be that. anybody in politics, you're like, you got to go to D.C., right? Like, that's probably why you went. And you took all of the bad people that all that's all they want is to manipulate the system. Power. Yeah. And, and you put them all in there. one city. It's like, of course, that's going to be horrible. That's interesting. Very good way to put power it. Power hungry. Yeah. If you put that many power hungry people in one place, what it looks like. Yeah. Oh. Oh. The energy's just off, too. Yeah. You've and so they're been. here. They're here in Arizona. They're yeah. here in California, but they're spread out and they're probably less obvious because we're surrounded by, we good surround people. ourselves by conservatives and like minded people. And yeah. When, yeah. when you think of the two most influential places being DC and Hollywood, they both run on that economy of oh, yeah. working your way to the top. Mm hmm. When I was young, I was trying to be an actress, and real fast I figured it out and said, this isn't for me. (laughs) Anyway, you guys are listening to the She's So Right Show. We'll be right back with political consultant Colton Duncan. I said it. Calendar star. Hey, Freedom Fighters, you're listening to the She's So Right Show with Brandy Barclay, Lindsey Graham, and political consultant Colton Duncan. She comes in hot now. Have you guys noticed that? The music starts and she's like, Freedom Fighters! I love it. <laughs> hey! Hey, hey. We actually listen to our podcast and we're like, time? gosh, there's a lot of music in this. I know. But we have plenty to say. So we're like, yeah, yeah let's get to it. So I want to, my question for you is, do you, through Arsenal you know, consulting, do you get to choose which candidates you support or is it like something that they give you and you got to run with it? No, absolutely. We uh, only work with conservative America first candidates. Um, That's kind of our three of them. That's that's our. (laughs) Well, and Trump already got elected. So that's our vein. Right. That's kind of where we found the bread and butter and where we found where we can really make a difference. Um, And it's 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 a lot of unconventional campaign styles, unconventional campaign ads, and uh, actually something cool, if uh, anytime in a primary, if uh, President Trump endorses someone um, against us, we will drop that client. (gasps) 
Interesting. What? Really? Wow. Why? Just based off of, you know, if the president's going to throw their support behind someone, why would we work against that? Wow. So do you jump ship and immediately try to uh, recruit we, that other um, candidate? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> we just, you know, you have a go back to the contract and see what the 30 days to quit or whatever it is. But I think that's kind no, of No, what I cool. mean, like, do, then do you try to s- go support the candidate he endorsed? In, yeah, in yeah. an ideal world, yeah. A lot of these people, a lot of these people already have their own consultants and uh, it gets a little, you know, elbows kind of get thrown mm-hmm. in the consulting world. But um, yeah, that's kind of a fun antidote, I think. So why is that? Is it is it because there's so much weight in a Trump endorsement? There's a lot of weight in a Trump endorsement, but also you just don't want to work against um, mm, the leader, the, the Trump world or the, the, the movement. Like if you he will, is right? the America for he started yeah. the America first so movement. So if, now if he's going to throw his support behind someone and then his surrogates and, his, you know, kind of they're all going to coalesce behind a candidate. Um, you don't want to work against that and s- splinter the party mm. further or splinter the uh, I, I'm among the mindset when President Trump endorses someone, everyone else in the uh, primary race should drop out. Yeah, mm. I, I think that that's kind of where our party's at. And I think. You know, you you don't beat a Trump endorsement. So how many how many I know we're not trying to go too far into this, but how many candidates are running for governor in Arizona right there now? There is still? five. Five and oh, the only five. A lot of have dropped out. Well, te- yeah, I was going to say technically. Well, technically, I think there's like twenty something. Yeah, technically filed, but five what would be called you know viable, mm. quote unquote viable candidates. How many of those are Republican? Well, I mean, the, or are they the, five, the five in the primary, yeah, gotcha. five okay. in the primary, and then on the Democratic yeah. side, I've, you've got three, <laughs> okay, Democrats. three or four, mm-hmm. okay. and their primary is kind of crazy too. And they're going down anyway. So, do you? Okay, so in the last couple of weeks, big story right now is Trump really pushing that he saved the world with the vax, right? Like, he, you know, he it's one of the biggest. This you is know, a good topic because it's controversial. No, it is because yeah. it's one of the biggest gifts to all mankind. I love Trump, but I have, you know, listening to this, knowing that I'm totally against it. I think it's a, a jo- It's the only thing I think I've really ever truly disagreed. Um, what's your take on him running and what that looks like for, you know, because there's such a huge divide here now. That That's a big thing. Like a lot of people will say, I don't want any part of that. I mean, if, if- Somehow I had his ear or Trump world ear. I would just say, eh, stay away from that. But hey, uh, when it comes to that credit where credit's due, I mean, the, the the funny thing is, is like the leftists will, you know, fax, 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 fax. You got to get fax, 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 booster, booster, booster. And then as soon as you mention, well, you know, Trump is the one that, quote unquote, gave us this vaccine. Right. They don't want to talk about that. Right. But mm-hmm. it's it's tribalism on both sides. Sure. And it's become probably it would be best if the whole vaccine never became politicized but now it right. has i mean i you do you get it or don't get it yeah or, i think I mean, most, the one thing about trump that i love is he is he more like just do what you want to do even though he's a fan of it i'm not i'm not a genius politically and the consultant here can chime in on this but what i think i'm hearing him say is he's never going to trash it because he came out with it right it's well, him. And, and but he, he's not he does not support mandates and he continues to say yeah, I got the vax. It's no big deal, but no one should be forced. It's like he's never going to trash it because he it came out on his on his watch. You know, yeah, but he's not. I would say it doesn't seem to me like he's forcing it. It seems to me like the really far right conservatives want to throw him under the bus that he's forcing it. But the things he's He's not forcing it, though, he's yeah, he's just and he's not even really endorsing it. He's saying, "Eh, I got my booster. Mm -hmm. Everyone should should choose. Yes. It's like he's trying really hard, and a lot of people say this. It's not what Trump says. It's how he says it, right? It's like, okay, this is getting ridiculous. Like, I'm not listening to everything Trump says, but he is just saying, oh, I got my booster, and he everyone finally, should be able to he choose. He finally came in, and we fi- we had someone that just really turned the light on, and all the, what, what is it, all the all the bugs scattered. I mean, mm-hmm. he just, right. he, he ripped the Band-Aid off of the entire political apparatus that's been controlling. I mean, people that you know, get offended by his tweets or his, his manner. He's a New Yorker. He's a, he, that's, he's a brute guy. That's, that's his brand. Right. Um, and we had, w- would you rather would have rather, someone that, yeah, someone like Barack seriously. Obama that lies to you nope. eloquently? Ooh, right. Ooh, right. Ooh, okay. This is one of my yeah, favorite see. Brady quotes <laughs> yeah. that I would rather have a sloppy truth teller sounds a little mean, a little gruff, a little rough than a, an eloquent liar. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that, that is the biggest difference. Yep. 
And, and the, the problem with everyone being so obsessed with Trump's tweets is it made him authentic. He said what was on his mind. If you didn't like it, be offended all you want, but that's not it. They had to take him off of Twitter. Yeah, like, well, and they didn't even... doing something right. Yeah, they didn't even have to. Twitter's communist crazy people, like big tech owned whatever. But so you're offended. Like, that's that's all you get. You know what? Wouldn't you rather have the leader of the free world tweeting you the truth straight from his mind and mouth than through, like you said, 10 consultants consultants. that are telling him... I want to say something, but I better not because it might offend people. No, thank you. I'd rather you say what you're thinking so that I know exactly who you are. And where you stand. And you could tell the difference between a speech, because his speeches were just great and they were off the cuff. And then any other politician. And now now that we've had (laughs) Trump... You can really recognize the difference between authentic mm-hmm. politician, yeah. quote unquote, and just like everyone. Like Biden ev- reading off the monitor. End of like, speech. Yeah. When he reads and end they, of speech. <laughs> they all they all give these they all give these cooked up. Um, you can tell when you when you listen to almost yeah. every politician, you can tell it's written by a consultant. You can yeah. tell it's this. It, 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 they're all the same. Once you've heard mm-hmm. one political speech, you've heard them all. When he was on stage with 17 other Republicans. It was him, the businessman, and then all these politicians, and they all sounded the same. And so he stood out, and he won the primary, and he went on to become the greatest president of a lifetime. My favorite Trump moment is when he was debating Hillary, and she said something like, this wouldn't happen if I were president. Or if you'd be in jail. He goes, yeah, you'd be in jail. And just walks away like the best. Like he literally dropped the mic. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Yes. But see, so, okay, so I have a question for that. Colton because here we are. say that. They'd be like, I better consult before I make a joke. But I have to challenge this because he is helping carry. Yeah. So you're saying that like everything she says is off the cuff, just straight from the heart. Just authentic. It's almost like she did it for three decades too. I mean, going into this, she obviously can speak. Yeah, um, she's great. I it, and it makes me wonder if we need more um, TV personalities to run for office. You think about Donald Trump and mm-hmm. Carrie Lake and some of these uh, communicators. Ronald Reagan. Yes, the great he was, communicator. He was an actor. Yeah, he yeah. was an actor yep. and a Democrat activist mm-hmm. at one point in his life. Um, it's almost like we we our country thirsts for people to come onto the scene and be able to effectively communicate um, an idea, effectively communicate a set of values, mm-hmm. um, as opposed to just the generic consultant talk, the, right. the generic uh, political talk that we've gotten for decades. Right. Well, and I hate that, too, that being a politician um, up until, I believe, right before Trump, has always been about your political resume. Oh, and it's yeah. like, I, I hold oh, so you're a career politician. Awesome. That's like the last thing we need. Well, now and then Barack the freaking Obama America a elected organizer. Yeah. America elected Trump, oh, and a now non-politician. We're done, we're done with uh, we're done with lifelong politicians. I think we are too. I think, I think we're going to start electing. We ever start caring about a resume again? Right. I right. actually believe, and I know you guys do too, is our founding fathers. That's what they had in mind. Like they farmers, you teachers. know, farm, you know, farmer coming in from the community as leaders in the community to lead, serve, to serve. Mm-hmm. The word serve with right? authority, in and then authority. move on and let someone else serve. Yeah, but serving your community, serving your people. And you should be serving in an area where you have the authority to speak. For example, homeboy in Scottsdale Unified School District. <laughs> go away, dude. Yeah. 26 with no kids. Uh-huh. You don't have authority over other people's kids, and you shouldn't be. But you know what? That goes back to when we were at God Speak Church and we were listening from David Barton, you guys. I cannot emphasize enough to please, please, please go listen to some David Barton yeah. videos because he will exp- he explains the way our country was built on faith and our founding fathers, how they were, they came from faith and that all the revolutionary war was won, not, you know, by this church saying not here, this street saying not here, this Mm -hmm. town saying not here. It doesn't get one with us sitting on our phones, looking at Washington, watching Joe Biden mumble through a speech. It does not, we do not change the world that way. We change the world by actually putting down our phones, having conversation with our kids, not letting them get indoctrinated seven hours a day, going to our school board meetings so that these punks like this 26 year old is not leading the charge that I mean, we're and we are all guilty. Mm-hmm. We are all guilty of letting this happen. Yep. So it, it complacent. 
Yeah. We just, oh my gosh, we're Americans just we just believe we've been taught like we're so cush. Okay. It's, it's, there's an apathy here. And if you have done what Brandy and I have both just agreed to doing, voting Republican down the ballot or whatever, or I've can admit I've never been involved in any of my kids' school things, you are forgiven because we were not all awake. Yes. Now we're all awake, and you have awake. no freaking excuse. Now if you don't go, don't get involved, you're not doing your freaking part. Period. Yeah, I agree. Is that that hurts? I'm sorry. And every single time I okay. Guys, and I, there's people that I love that have gotten the jab very much, love them very much. This is the truth, though. If you don't believe in what you're doing and you're doing it, you're making it harder on every mm-hmm. single person from here on out. I'm sorry. You're you're hurting the movement. If mm-hmm. you're doing something you don't really believe in. There is never a better time to say, if you are not for us, you're against us. Mm-hmm. Like, we are fighting. That literally was a download from God into my brain when I asked God whether my ministry should get political. It was literally a walk I took with God saying, Father, because I was getting pushback. Do I go there? Because how do I not? This is the elephant in the room. How do we not talk about it? I asked God, do I get political in this ministry space? literally that came into my mind that it was not my own. Mm. If right now in this space and time, this is good versus evil. The Bible is all over it. We're looking at revelations, people putting microchips in their hands to buy milk at the grocery store that say they're vaccinated. You guys, this is end time revelation stuff here. So he's yeah, it's exactly what came into my mind. If you're not if for, you're us, not you're for us, us, you're against us. And some of it really isn't. We, we call it political. Some of it's not political as much as it is the culture war. And that's something that I think we need to do a better job of separating between policy, political talk and the culture war. And conservatives have done a horrible job over the past few decades of just kind of being complacent in the culture war, ignoring the culture war. We were so worried about the marginal tax rate and lowering the corporate tax rate. We were so worried about fighting socialism, this boogeyman that's socialism, that we woke up one day and we've got men in women's restrooms and the gender thing's confusing and we've got our kids so confused. The culture war, I don't – and it goes back to what you're saying about, you know, your ministry getting involved in that – I don't know if that's as much political as much as it is mm-hmm. um, just. Yeah, just because the Democrats yeah. adapted a support for it doesn't make it a Democratic policy. It makes it an amoral social policy. You, you know? know, exactly. It's, true. it's culture war. It's a demonic culture war impeding on morality. And if you look at the Ten Commandments, look at every single one of them. Every single one of them is being attacked right now. Mm-hmm. You can go and steal and it's OK. Yeah. Yep. But if you. Don't wear a mask in a restaurant. You get slapped yeah. by your flight attendant. <laughs> Woo! I've been almost there. Trust me. Oh, my, oh my gosh. What a great episode, Colton. Thank fun. you. Thank you for the calendar. My husband's going to be way yeah. bit jealous. <laughs> <laughs> He's fully clothed, folks. All right, guys. Uh, follow us on Instagram at She's So Right Show. Uh, shop our Patriot products at She's So Right Show.com. And Colton, thank you so much. Thank you, for thank you Colton. It was, was a blast. blast. We'll have you back in the spring when things are heating up yeah, in the election. Absolutely. Woo. Thank you, guys. God bless you all. God bless America. It's Dylan's KC Barbecue at Four Valley locations. Our sports bar in Arrowhead is packed with TVs for the ultimate sports fan. Our Wildlife World Zoo location will have you on the edge of your seat, dining right next to our 60,000 gallon shark tank. Dylan's Bayou at Pleasant Harbor has never ending sunsets, beautiful people, and live music every weekend. And our newest location, Western Trails Ranch, is 12 acres of rodeo fun and live outdoor concerts for the entire family. It's Dylan's KC Barbecue where we're elite, unique, and memorable.